Bonjour tout le monde. Je suis très heureux d'être ici aujourd'hui avec les ministres Mendicino et Blair. Pour commencer, j'aimerais remercier l'ancien gouverneur général David Johnston de nous avoir rapidement remis son premier rapport sur l'ingérence étrangère. En mars, il a commencé son examen indépendant pour évaluer l'étendue et l'effet de l'ingérence étrangère dans les élections canadiennes et pour fournir des recommandations afin que le Canada puisse mieux protéger sa démocratie. Le mandat comprenait des recommandations sur les mécanismes et processus nécessaires pour que le Canada puisse combattre efficacement l'ingérence étrangère et pour que les Canadiens puissent garder confiance dans leurs élections et leurs institutions démocratiques. Nous accueillons favorablement le rapport d'aujourd'hui et ses recommandations. Understandably, Canadians have had many questions over the last few months, and that is why we launched this process. The former Governor General has reviewed thousands of pages of classified and unclassified documents. While preparing his report, Mr. Johnston was given complete access to, all re to any relevant records and documents from across government. I myself welcomed the opportunity to sit down with him, as did other ministers. He also interviewed senior officials, security experts, and many others. The work has led him to conclude that, and I quote, the elections of 2019 and 2021 were well protected by sophisticated mechanisms, and there is no basis to lack confidence in their results. Le rapport réitère de manière indépendante et impartiale que les deux dernières élections au Canada ont été libres et équitables et que les résultats ont représenté la volonté des Canadiens. Selon le rapport, il n'y a aucune indication que la classe politique était en défaut d'agir sur des renseignements, des conseils ou des recommandations. Toutefois, le rapport indique que l'ingérence étrangère représente une menace grave et il contient plusieurs recommandations sur les processus visant à détecter, à dissuader et à contrer les tentatives d'ingérence et à mieux gérer la circulation d'informations au sein de la fonction publique. Nous acceptons ces recommandations. L'ancien gouverneur général a déterminé que la prochaine étape de son travail consistera à tenir des audiences publiques. Nous soutenons ce travail sans réserve, y compris l'intention du gouverneur général de créer un dialogue avec les Canadiens, en particulier ceux issus des communautés de la diaspora qui sont souvent la cible de tentatives d'ingérence. Ce travail est essentiel pour l'élaboration de son rapport final. Conformément aux recommandations, l'OSSNR et le CPSNR examineront la partie confidentielle de ce rapport afin qu'ils puissent fournir leur propre évaluation. Letters have been sent to opposition leaders offering security clearances so that they may receive the relevant intelligence. I think everyone can agree with the former Governor General's assessment that all leaders must work from a common understanding of true facts. Mr. Johnson also recognized that more work must be done to address the shortcomings in the flow of security information from the public service to the political level. Our government will always protect the integrity of Canada's democracy and stand up to foreign attempts to interfere with it. And this is a duty our government has dedicated ourselves to since day one. In fact, in 2015, we ran on a promise to bring in oversight of our national security agencies by parliamentarians from all parties, something the previous government had staunchly refused to do. And we did that. The work to counter foreign interference needs to constantly innovate and evolve especially in a world where interference by other countries in our democracy is more frequent and increasingly sophisticated. Just look at how easy it has been for bad actors to create and disseminate misinformation and disinformation online. And that's merely one example. I just got back from the G7 where we talked about this at length. The illegal invasion of Ukraine and rising authoritarianism were much discussed. And countries there, including non-G7 nations like South Korea and Australia, 
are facing threats to their democracies. Foreign interference is not new. And it doesn't just target our elections. It targets all aspects of society, our research institutes and universities, our businesses, and most commonly, the diverse communities that enrich our country. Canada is not alone in this. It has happened in elections in the United States, in France, in Germany, and in the Brexit referendum, among others. At the G7, one of the things we discussed was the rapid response mechanism that Canada introduced when we hosted in 2018 so that we could all strengthen our response to diverse and evolving threats to democracy. We will never tolerate foreign interference. Notre gouvernement continuera toujours de protéger l'intégrité de la démocratie au Canada et de la défendre contre les tentatives d'ingérence étrangère. Il s'agit du devoir de tous les leaders politiques et de tous les parlementaires et de tous les citoyens. Nous devons faire honneur à notre démocratie, lutter activement contre la désinformation et la mésinformation, ainsi qu'assurer l'intégrité des institutions démocratiques du Canada, notamment nos élections. Au Canada, la démocratie est forte et stable. Si ça ne plaît pas aux dictateurs et aux régimes autoritaires, ben tant pis. La démocratie, c'est le choix que la population canadienne a fait lors de chacune des 44 élections fédérales tenues depuis 1867. C'est un privilège qui nous est cher et qui est au cœur de notre identité à titre de Canadien. People from around the world move to Canada with the dream of one day having citizenship and with it the right to cast a ballot and maybe even to step up and put their own name on a ballot. Because in Canada, we have the right to choose our own future. Every one of us has a responsibility to stand up for our democracy. And undermining it for political gain is wrong and damaging. Rigorous debate is a pillar of democracy, absolutely. So is interrogating our institutions and holding all elements of government to account. But democracy is not a game. There are lines we must not cross. We must never play into the hands of those overseas or at home who want us to lose faith in our democratic institutions. These institutions have stood strong for over a century and a half, but they require our constant attention. Democracy didn't happen by accident, and it won't continue without effort. And as the report says, democracy is built on trust. Trust in the processes that elect people to serve, and trust in the people who hold that responsibility. To lead, is to choose. And responsible leadership requires us to take action that reaffirms Canadians' trust in our democracy. That's how we face the scale of the challenges that lie before us. Meeting this moment requires all of us to choose to strengthen trust. This is what Canadians deserve. This is what our government is committed to do. Once again, I want to thank the Governor General for his work. I welcome your questions. Thank you, Prime Minister. Merci, le Premier Ministre. We have 15 minutes for questions from the media. Nous avons 20, uh, 15 minutes for the questions des media. Et on va commencer avec CBC. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. You're not bound to follow the recommendations of David Johnston. And we saw the other party leaders all say that you should go ahead with a public inquiry anyway. Is there any chance he will do that? And if not, why not? I committed uh, to listening very carefully and abiding by the recommendations that the, uh, that, uh, the former Governor General made, uh, and he uh, explained and justified his thought processes by it, and we will be following his recommendations. And you just said democracy is built on trust, and we've heard from the other party leaders, all the other party leaders uh, seem unsatisfied with this process. And it, hasn't convinced that many people outside of your own camp. Do you have any regrets about the way that you set up this process uh, that failed to convince people outside of the party? I think, first of all, in regards to other party leaders, uh, the conclusions uh, drawn by uh, the uh, 
the former Governor General in this report are built on access to confidential and highly sensitive information uh, that has been gathered and analyzed by our uh, intelligence agencies. We have offered, I sent off letters a few hours ago, to all the different party leaders, offering them to get the necessary security clearances to be able to look at all the relevant raw intelligence so that they can see that the foundations and the analysis and the conclusions of this report are firm. I think all Canadians are rightly concerned not just about foreign interference, but about misinformation and disinformation. And that's where making sure, yes, we have robust debates about whether or not governments are doing enough or everything necessary to keep Canadians safe is an essential part of democracy that I look forward to continuing in this House and in the public square. But I think the foundation of having those rigorous debates in a way that contributes to democracy is to make sure that there is an access to and understanding of the true facts. And I certainly hope that all party leaders will avail themselves of the opportunity to understand the facts of the situation as we continue important debates on how to best keep Canadians our businesses, our research institutions, and especially our democracy, safe. Next question. Good afternoon, Prime Minister Terea Isri, Global News. Uh, David Johnston was asked repeatedly this morning about his relationship to you and whether he could remain impartial and even the perception of bias. Will you consider appointing someone else to lead this process so that Canadians trust the eventual findings? I think David Johnston answered uh, those questions uh, extremely uh, well this morning in his, uh, in his exchange with the media. Um, I saw him a few times as a kid. I got to know him after he was appointed Governor General uh, by Stephen Harper, uh, once I was already a parliamentarian. And quite frankly, the quality and the caliber, not just of his decades of extraordinary service to this country, but the quality and caliber of the report he's put forward leaves me in total confidence in his ability to continue to do this important work for Canadians. And given the uh, reaction from opposition leaders, are you concerned at all about the political risk of not holding a public inquiry? Like I said, I look forward to uh, party leaders choosing to actually um, get the security briefings, security clearances necessary to see the facts that underpin this report. So that going forward, we can continue to have robust, informed debates on the best way to keep Canadians safe in a world in which foreign interference is increasingly a challenge for us, for all of our allies as well. I don't think Canadians would want or expect any of their leaders to choose ignorance when they can choose to have the facts laid out for them. And I can assure you, in our democracy, there are always going to be plenty of things to criticize a government on and to challenge us to do better. But let us, please, ground it in an understanding of the true facts and not choose to risk weakening Canadians' confidence in our institutions by building partisan attacks on things that are patently untrue. Question question. Bonjour, Monsieur Trudeau, Madeleine Blémorin, Radio-Canada. Vous dites que la démocratie repose sur la confiance dans une enquête ou une révision, un travail qui est basé sur des renseignements qui sont confidentiels, il faut nécessairement avoir confiance dans la personne qui mène cette enquête-là. Vous, vous dites, M. Johnston, c'est un imminent Canadien. Mais si l'opposition dit qu'elle n'a pas confiance en cet homme-là, est-ce que tout le processus, finalement, est annulé à cause de ça? Non, pas du tout. Et pour deux raisons claires. Tout d'abord, 
parce que, et c'est la proposition même de M. Johnston, euh, la, euh, le, la Comité de sécurité et d'intelligence des parlementaires va pouvoir regarder le rapport et tous les renseignements secrets et confidentiels qui sont euh, sous-jacentes et qui sont la, le, le fondement des conclusions dans ce rapport et faire une analyse s'ils sont d'accord ou non avec ces conclusions. Et s'ils ne sont pas d'accord avec les conclusions qu'ont tiré M. Johnston, ils vont pouvoir le dire. Alors, d'avoir un comité de parlementaire de tous les différents partis pour vérifier le travail qu'a fait euh, le, euh, le représentant spécial va pouvoir donner confiance à tous les Canadiens que ce n'est pas juste une personne qui le dit, c'est un comité de tous les parlementaires de différents partis. Et en plus, on est en train d'offrir, ou j'ai offert déjà, à tous les chefs de parti de... Euh, se faire, de faire le processus pour avoir euh, le niveau approprié euh, de, de sécurité pour pouvoir voir les documents et l'information, l'intelligence à la base de ces conclusions et de tirer leurs propres conclusions sur euh, la véracité du rapport de M. Johnston. Donc, ce n'est pas une question de demander à tout le monde de euh, d'avoir confiance dans une personne, même si c'est une personne dont l'intégrité ne peut pas être questionnée et qui a été choisie pour être gouverneur général par M. Harper, euh, qui a démontré des années de service. Il y a eu un mécanisme pour vérifier de façon multipartisane ces conclusions et c'est justement les genres de choses que, dans lesquelles les Canadiens peuvent avoir confiance. Tout le monde comprend que quand on arrive à des, des, des instances de sécurité nationale, on ne peut pas publier sur la place publique, dans les journaux, toutes les informations confidentielles qui sont liées à notre sécurité nationale. Mais que des parlementaires de différents partis ou des chefs de partis puissent voir ces informations-là et comprendre que les conclusions sont réelles ou annoncer qu'ils sont en désaccord, c'est comme ça que les gens peuvent avoir confiance, justement, que nos institutions sont en train de faire leur travail. Il y a M. Blanchet qui voudrait déléguer un député pour revoir, voir l'annexe du rapport. Est-ce que vous le permettriez? Puis, dans, dans son rapport, M. Johnston dit, bon, ça ne vaudrait pas la peine d'attendre un peu plus longtemps. Il y aurait du chevauchement. Un, un enquêteur d'une commission d'enquête publique n'irait pas plus loin que moi, n'aurait pas besoin des, des, des pouvoirs d'une commission d'enquête. Est-ce que ces arguments-là, M. Trudeau, font le poids par rapport à la confiance du public dans le système? Bien, tout d'abord, euh, M. Blanchette a déjà un représentant qui siège sur euh, le comité de parlementaires qui a euh, exactement ce niveau de sécurité nécessaire. Mais encore mieux, on offre à M. Blanchette directement la capacité d'obtenir le niveau de sécurité nécessaire pour qu'il puisse regarder lui-même l'intelligence euh, qui est au fondement des conclusions de ce rapport. Euh, deuxièmement, euh, M. Johnston explique euh, très clairement son raisonnement pour le, euh, pourquoi il trouve qu'une euh, enquête publique euh, n'arriverait pas à plus de réponses que ça. Euh, par exemple, le, la capacité d'exiger l'apparition d'un témoin Bien, le seul témoin qui n'a pas témoigné devant M. Johnston, c'était M. Polièvre. Euh, je pense qu'il euh, a eu accès à toutes les informations nécessaires euh, et il a pu faire le travail de façon euh, rigoureuse et intègre. Next question. Kevin Gallagher, CTV National News. In his conclusion, M. Johnston said there was no malfeasance on the government's part, but that the system that underpins Canada's national security isn't working, what responsibility do you take for that? Actually, what he uh, focused on was the fact that the communications, the flow of information uh, from our national security agencies didn't, uh, in a uh, properly controlled and rigorous way, consistently make itself, uh, make its way to the uh, right levels. Uh, 
perfect example on that is uh, where he talks about the um, the allegations against uh, Michael Chong's, uh, actually regarding uh, Michael Chong, where they talk about, let me see if I can find it. Here we go. That there was no intelligence indicated that the PRC took th steps to threaten Mr. Chong's family, but that there is intelligence indicated they were looking for information. Well, the fact that there was in, in, intelligence indicating that the PRC was looking for information into uh, Mr. Chong's family should have made it up to the highest levels, even if there wasn't any intelligence indicating that there were steps to threaten his family. So that's an example that I addressed uh, just a few weeks ago, saying anything that involves an MP or their families should automatically uh, get up to uh, a high political level so it can be dealt with. These are the kinds of things we need to ensure that there is more rigor uh, and clearer flows of information, both upwards but also across government. And that's uh, something that we're going to be continuing uh, to uh, improve. But as has been highlighted, foreign interference is a constantly evolving, increasingly sophisticated set of threats to Canadians, to our institutions. Um, and to our democracy, and that's why we are constantly going to have to be iterating and improving in our response to foreign interference. Une des conclusions du rapport, ça a été que nous devons améliorer la façon que nos services d'intelligence et de renseignement communiquent les uns avec les autres, mais aussi avec les niveaux politiques. Par exemple. Uh, dans le rapport, on conclu, uh, le, Mr. Johnson uh, souligne qu'il uh, y avait de l'intelligence qui, il y avait aucune intelligence qui suggérait uh, que Pékin uh, faisait des men menaces à la famille de M. Chong, mais il y avait de l'intelligence, des renseignements qui disaient que Pékin cherchait de l'information sur la famille de M. Chong. Eh bien, ça, c'est un morceau d'information qui, même s'il n'y avait pas de menace contre la famille de M. Chang, juste le fait qu'il se soit intéressé à la famille, on aurait dû le savoir. Et donc, on a besoin d'améliorer les processus de, de suivi pour que euh, les politiciens soient au courant s'il y a quelque enjeu qui implique euh, les députés ou leur famille. I just said that in English already. Okay. Double translation. Okay. Um, I'll just uh, refocus here for a second. So you're offering this intelligence now to opposition leaders, but a lot of what's undermining the confidence is a lack of transparency. Is there any consideration for declassifying documents that would give Canadians more confidence to understand a broader picture, even if it's redacted as it was in the commission for the convoy? Uh, in terms of declassification, that's absolutely something uh, that Mr. Johnston uh, is going to be looking at uh, over the coming months towards his final report in October of 2023, and we're very much looking forward to those conclusions. But let me highlight that one of the ways that we get to restore people's confidence in what our intelligence communities are doing when, obviously, total transparency is simply not an option uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, intelligence services whose people put their life on, their line, on the line to protect uh, Canadians from bad actors out there, is to ensure that politicians of all different parties are able to oversee and get the clearance necessary to look at everything our intelligence agencies do. And that's a commitment we made in 2015 in the election where the incumbent Conservative government refused to bring in oversight by parliamentarians over our uh, intelligence agencies, and we actually did it. NSICOP is a committee of parliamentarians that has the power to look into everything our intelligence agencies do. Now, they are bound by the uh, 
secrecy necessary to keep Canadians safe, but they can and do, they can and do absolutely share their conclusions around what's working, what's not working, and whether or not Canadians can be concerned uh, or should be relieved that intelligence agencies are doing their work. Uh, so it is a functioning piece of democracy that gets to that question of how do we make sure that those folks out there or in the shadows protecting our democracy from dangerous actors are kept safe while they do our job, their jobs, and parliamentarians and Canadians can be re reassured that parliamentarians from all different parties are looking closely to make sure that they're doing everything necessary to keep Canadians safe. Thank you. That will conclude today's press conference. Merci. Take it. Sorry, I'll take, I'll take a question from Justin because I haven't seen him in a while. Appreciate that. Um, Prime Minister, uh, the report uh, does indicate that Han Dong, a former Liberal MP, um, was the unwitting beneficiary probably of the influence campaign on his nomination race. Uh, it indicates he went on to forge a relationship with the Chinese consulate in Toronto. And it said he was having conversations with the consulate about the two Michaels in detention in China, uh, even if some of the reports were incorrect. Um, can you tell us what the nature of those conversations were? And do you see a path back into the Liberal caucus for Mr. Dong? I think on this point, um, the report by Mr. Johnston was fairly unequivocal um, that there were uh, false allegations uh, made against Mr. Dong. And I look forward to having conversations with him. Uh, he decided to step away from caucus in order to clear his name. Um, I will hear from him on what his thinking is going forward. Okay. Uh, je pense que le rapport de Mr. Johnston a été très clair que euh, il y avait euh, des euh, faussetés dans les allégations contre euh, Monsieur Dang. Euh, comme vous savez, Monsieur Dang a choisi euh, de se retirer du caucus pour pouvoir euh, lutter contre ces allégations. Euh, je vais sûrement avoir une conversation avec lui sur euh, comment il se trouve en ce moment-ci et c'est quoi ses réflexions pour les prochaines étapes. Just finally, you know, you're calling on Canadians to, to build trust, uh, but as Mr. Johnson reports makes, uh, report makes clear, um, you had intelligence and you were briefed on um, an, an attempt by Beijing to meddle in our democracy, and you didn't tell the public. Um, given that, you know, doesn't rebuilding trust have to start with you? Um, and, and, and going forward, do you have to create a better disclosure regime um, that uh, discloses these sorts of attempts uh, to meddle in our democracy even or even especially when it benefits your party. Sorry, Justin, I'm still hung up on the fact that you think I wasn't telling Canadians about foreign interference. I talked about foreign interference uh, from the very beginnings of getting elected. That's why uh, we move forward on a committee of parliamentarians to oversee what, parliamentary, what uh, our security agencies were doing. That's why in January of 2019, we created the elections protocol that ensured that while our 2019 election was going on, top public servants would be able to monitor through updates daily from our intelligence agencies the state of foreign interference into our elections. Now, we made those announcements in 2019, and we have continually talked about the threat of foreign interference since then. There's a NSI COP report going back to 2017 on foreign interference that I highly recommend people look at. I believe it was 2017. The subject of foreign interference isn't something that suddenly sprang up over the past months. This is something we have been taking seriously as a government for years. And not just here in Canada, but in 2018, when we hosted the, G8, uh, the G7 in Charlevoix, we created a rapid response mechanism for all G7 countries to respond to foreign interference in our democracies. So maybe you're just waking up to the fact that there's foreign interference, but I've been talking about it for years. And what Mr. Johnston laid out in this report is all the mechanisms we have, how they're working, where we need to improve, particularly in terms of flows of information, and the fact that we're going to have to continue to iterate and keep moving forward on developing even better and better tools as foreign interference continues to get more and more sophisticated. 
Merci beaucoup.